Riley Q, how much did you know about the Jerry Sandusky scandal before getting involved in the movie? Um, I, not much, to be honest. Like, I'd, I'd seen it on the news, obviously, and I kind of got little bits here and there when, when, this, when it came out. But um, it wasn't something that I had particularly looked into very much or knew. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know the details at all. And how, how different do you think the story would have been if it had come out in 2018 instead of 2011? Like, do you think it would have moved faster for Sarah? Um, I, probably. You know, I think that what was the sort of what's going on at the moment, I think that it would have been maybe a little bit easier of a, a break um, and more supported. And, and um, I think she would have been probably more supported. From what I understand, she, she did feel support um, from her co-workers and that kind of thing, but I think that it would have been um, a lot more sort of worldwide to support, definitely. All right, now take me back and tell me, how did you get the part? Uh, I read the script um, and then I, I sat down with Barry in New York um, and we just sort of talked about Sarah and about the project and um, something that I really liked, um, which, that we both really liked was how you, you're kind of seeing a reporter that's a little bit more green and not fully, you know, you know, hasn't been doing this for a long time and that's not something either of us had really seen before and so that was a sort of interesting thing. And also you've got this young woman who's sort of going up against this you know, incredibly, incredibly powerful group of men, um, which of course is in, interesting to to play. So um, yeah, we just talked a lot, and then, and then you know, I kind of signed on to do the, the film. And what do you think they saw in you? Why did they think that you'd be right for this part? Um. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to ask Barry. I I think we just had a good conversation about it, and I feel like I, you know, I really wanted to do the project. That probably helped. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I think we just sort of were in agreement about her and and the film, and you know, I, I don't know. It just kind of we got along, I guess. Now, I believe this is your first role since your debut role in The Runaways playing a real person. So how do you approach that differently? It is. It's, it's definitely strange because you feel pressure to do it right, um, of course. But with both of the people I've sort of, yeah, I don't know. It's it, Both of the people I've played that were real were on set and you know available to talk to and um sarah was very much involved so it was a, you know that was helpful because it's in a way you have you have somebody there to sort of bounce things off of and you don't have to make every decision by yourself which in a way is there's something cool about that where you can be like well i don't know what to do here how she would be feeling about this and then I could just ask her, you know, instead of kind of having to make it up myself. <laughs> so in a way, you have this sort of support, uh, it feels like. Um, but it is definitely something that is a bit of, of, I did feel pressure because you don't want to get it wrong and you don't want to disappoint them. And, you know, if God, that, that would suck. So. <laughs> and what did she tell you about your portrayal and how to shape it? You know, the one thing that she did tell me was that she wasn't, she wasn't, you know, it wasn't, she did feel supported. That's something that I, I sort of, I think I misunderstood or I didn't, I didn't um, know was that she, I, I thought she was sort of just always up against something. And I, I think that one thing she made clear to me was that she, she felt supported and she knew she was doing the right thing. She never sort of wavered or, um, doubted herself or had sort of a conflict she kind of just knew what she wanted and went for it and there wasn't a lot of um questioning you know she wasn't like am i doing the right thing like she she definitely knew that she was doing the right thing and um sort of stuck with it so that was something that you know was interesting because as a performer you're like oh where's you know 
the internal like <laughs> conflict within <laughs> to make it dramatic. But she was like, no, I just did it. Like I, I, I was, you know, I, I didn't have this sort of, yeah, I, I knew what I was doing and I knew what I was doing was the right thing to do. And I just did it. You know, it wasn't this drama. Now in the movie, we see Sarah interact with uh, victim one, but obviously there were you know, many more victims. How do you feel about it all being uh, boiled down to just that one guy, I guess, to showcase in the movie? Sorry, I kind of lost you in the Oh, one. sorry. Uh, I was just saying, um, in the movie, you only interact with uh, the one victim. Uh, why do you think the story is told that way? Um, you know, I think there, that is a choice that Barry made. Um, that uh, for whatever reason, that was the victim that he wanted to show. And um, I, I think, I, I believe there was some dramatic license taken there. Um, I'm not sure if that, if that victim was actually in that conversation or if it was just, I'm, I, I'm pretty positive that Sarah spoke um, with his mother. Um, but I, so I think that that was sort of, um, a choice that Barry had made to um, help, you know, or to create, or to, you know, to tell the story. But um, it, there are very few sort of things like that, a dramatic sort of license taken in the film. Like most of it is pretty 100% um, accurate. Um, but that's, I think you'd have to ask him sort of why he chose that victim. Yes, yeah, so you keep mentioning this uh, Barry Levinson. Uh, tell me what distinguishes him uh, as a director, uh, I guess in your role as an actor. Um, he was amazing. You know, one thing I, I've never really experienced that I got to do with him was he really wants you to try the scene in a way that you never would have imagined it um, being played. So, for example, like if you're doing like a very serious scene, he would kind of he would do it. He would do it that way, but then he would also kind of want to see it in a more, you know, a completely like a like a comedy almost or something, you know. And then it was so it was like a very interesting. Like he'd want to see sort of both ends of the spectrum on it, and and all the different ways you could do do the scene, which isn't something that I've ever really done before, which I really enjoyed. Um, so he's kind of it made me think of scenes very differently because some of the some of the way you know uh, for example that the the scene where i i'm speaking to to the victim's mother um we did that scene in a lot of different ways <laughs> like um uh tonally anyway um and i it really was an amazing experience because i i we kind of it ended up going places that i was like this is not how i ever would have seen the scene going. So he's kind of opened my mind in a way now when I'm looking at scenes where I kind of look at them differently. And, um, yeah, it was it was really fun. On this movie, did you get to work with um, Al Pacino? Because you only have the one scene in which you're both present, I believe, and I don't think you even interact in it. Yeah, it's funny because, no, we don't interact. And in both of the scenes that I'm in with him, I'm watching him speak, which was good for me because I was so, I've had a few moments in my life where I'm working with an actor and I'm like starstruck a little bit. So I think it was better for me that <laughs> I just sort of got to watch him perform as opposed to like have to interact a lot with him because I was a little bit intimidated. Um, you know, you're just like standing there and trying to be in the scene, but then a part of me is like, oh, that's Al Pacino, oh my God. Like, doing a movie with Al Pacino, that's crazy, you know? <laughs> like, so yeah, I got to sort of just stand back and watch him. So a few years ago, you were in Mad Max, which went on to win six Oscars, and then you were in The Girlfriend Experience, did more kind of stuff like this, and you got a Golden Globe nomination. Do you prefer Oscar or Emmy campaigning? Oh, God. Well, I wasn't really a part of the Oscar campaign for, um, uh, for Mad Max because I was shooting The Girlfriend Experience. So I wasn't able to go to any of the things like I missed out on Cannes and all those things. And so um, I had a lot of fun doing the Emmy stuff uh, for GFE because that was that's kind of the only sort of, I guess, campaign I've ever been a part of. And it was really fun. Um, you get to 
really, I don't know. By the end of it, you really know what you're talking about. <laughs> and you really understand your character in a whole different way because <laughs> you, you know, you're really intellectualizing things and it's fun. And you're also talking to people that love, you know, television and um, cinema. And like, I love, I can talk to people all day about that kind of stuff. So it's fun. Now, around a piece that I pulled from your Twitter, uh, do you have any news about appearing on Riverdale? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't. I have no news on it, sadly. But... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, recently you started a production company, and why did you do that? I did that because I, um, I want lots of reasons. Um, I... My partner and I were very interested in sort of helping filmmakers and um, sort of get things going. And we really, we really um, were interested in development, actually, which is a little bit scary, I think, for some people. But it's something that we're both very passionate about. And um, and it's, I think, it's an area people are kind of afraid to kind of go into because it's a little, a little bit risky. And um, so yeah, we, we we just wanted to make content really, and um, and 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 help filmmakers make films, and and um, it was really that simple. And so we we started a company, and we're pretty we're pretty uh, focused on development, and um, you know, getting the rights to things, getting scripts written, and um, putting things together. That's that's kind of where we're, our focus is at the moment. And what lessons did you learn on set of Paterno uh, as a producer? Hmm. As a producer, you know, you're always kind of learning. I think it's 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 just it, it was a different experience. Like working with HBO was was interesting, um, and and just seeing how that sort of works, and um, you know, watching how everything sort of comes together is always always helpful and. Um, you know, I wasn't necessarily sitting on the set like thinking about producing just because I was sort of in the acting headspace. But um, I think that it's always it always helps, you know, and, and talking to people and getting to know how, how everybody does things. And I, OK, and my final question is, when you meet other Rileys, are they most often male, female or canine? <laughs> I think you know what my answer is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, it's funny. It's changing. First was canine. Like as a kid, I remember being like, oh, that's my dog's name. <laughs> and then male. Um, and then, uh, uh, the females that I've met that are named Riley are, are babies. So like little, little kids, but my age or anything sort of over, I don't know. How old are you? 25. Okay. Like over 20 is male, I think. Um, and then, like, under, like, six years old has been female. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for taking the time to chat. And we uh, hope to see Paterno this summer at the Emmys. Thank you.